This lecture covers a, a subject which many feel is very difficult. I'm going to talk about aqueous misdirection and malignant glaucoma. And I'm going to focus on many of the practical clinical pearls that are not easily accessible within the research literature and within textbooks. I want to start off by talking about the spectrum of this disease. Aqueous misdirection and malignant glaucoma are not one disease, but a group of diseases with a common phenotype. Starting off with concepts, I want to think about the key factors in the pathogenesis of aqueous misdirection. In order to start, we're going to go right back to 1869. Von Grafe was the first person to describe this condition, and he described a flat anterior chamber and very high intraocular pressure after a patient underwent surgery for angle closure glaucoma. The term malignant glaucoma was later coined as this condition was often refractory to treatment. Still later, the term aqueous misdirection evolved and I think this is a key term. The way to understand aqueous misdirection, a complex concept, is to simplify it and just remember that fluid, for example aqueous humour, always flows down the easiest route. Now for most of us, most of the time, fluid flows forward into the trabecular meshwork. However, in aqueous misdirection, the fluid is directed posteriorly. There are many possible mechanisms in aqueous misdirection, but commonly it is thought that there is contact of the ciliary body with the lens and or anterior hyaloid face, causing a blockage at the level of the ciliary sulcus. Fluid then flows the easiest way, which is posteriorly. And in many ways, one can think of the anterior hyaloid as acting like a one-way valve and then trapping fluid in the posterior segment. When thinking about the pathogenesis of aqueous misdirection, I like to use the following Venn diagram to think about the components in pathogenesis. Pupil block is a very important component. The anatomy of the ciliary body, i.e. plateau iris configuration, is very important. But we must not forget the third component, the inflammatory component of uveal effusion. If you enjoyed this lecture so far, please subscribe to http colon forward slash forward slash op dot vision. I hope you enjoyed this series as much as we have putting it together. Thank you.